<clears throat> God bless you, everybody. Shalom and love. So um, Jezebel's spirit is running rampant in the church. You know, in the churches today, we have lots of pastor sexies and father sexy. You might think, you, or you might be wondering, what, what, what's a father sexy? What's a pastor sexy? So these are those pastors who are on the pulpit but are sleeping with the congregation, amen? Or prostituting people in God's house. You might be saying, what you mean prostituting people in God's house? They are, they are false prophets. Because I don't see, I, I, I see these people to be false. When uh, some person called or is called as an apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, and you can, you have a church or ministry and you are sleeping with the people in your congregation, you are false. Because there's nothing in that action that justifies or that's in alignment with the word of God. Amen. So, for example, in my life, since um, the Lord Jesus Christ um, called me into ministry over 15 years ago, made it apparent. So, I've been attacked by many Jezebel spirits. I've had Jezebel spirits. People came in my ministry. I, I mean, man, Satan sent the best of the, the best of the best. But glory be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I'm grateful and thankful that I stand here today uh, to proclaim um, the good news. Amen. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. So calling the hearts of men to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm just so grateful and thankful that the Lord has kept me on the straight and the narrow path. Because the road is wide and many people are going on that wide road. You know, the partying, the night clubbing. Well, nothing ain't wrong with a little fun. You go to these carnivals or, you know, these bacchanals and this, these, these fets. And you, Sunday, you in church raising your hands like nothing happened because you don't have the fear of God. I've not, you don't have the fear of God. You lack the fear of God. Amen. Because you, you, many people are thinking, you're thinking that God is as unholy as you are. You are, you are trying to justify the, justify the works of the flesh. And call it an act of holiness. Well, I can meet somebody in there and tell them about the Lord. I, I, and that's another topic too. There are even some pastors that, whom have become father sexies and, and, and pastor sexies, whom God, ha, they, they have gone places God hasn't sent them. They have gone places, for example, in some Asian countries where there are lots of prostitutes on the street and stuff. And God never sent them there. And because God never sent them there, the principalities and the powers of these regions understands that or understood that God didn't send them there. As a result, they themselves end up men with men, with what they call um, lady boys. I mean, that's the term. Um, that, that, that they're known by, you know, in some nations, that's the term that they, that they, that, that, that they, um, give to, 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 to people doing certain things. Amen. And, um, some of them end up with prostitutes because God did not send them in these arenas. My point is that's the flesh. Amen. You wanting to do something doesn't mean that God approves of it or that he's in it with you. Amen. Glory be to God. Do you know you can buy a boat and sail it, but it's not licensed or it's not legal? So many in the body of Christ, you know, I mean, the people who are partying, smoking a little weed, well, nothing in wrong with having a little fun. So 
I, I'm, so let me share this and get this bit out of the way. One time I was praying and in deep prayer with the Lord and my eyes were open to the spirit. So for those of you who um, who's wondering what eyes are open to the spirit means, it's like you're taken into a vision that, I, for example, you can see me face to face, but you are now seeing things that are not normal in the physical realm. You're beginning to see angels. You're beginning to see also the demonic powers, things that are creatures that don't physically exist. Amen. So nonetheless, I was taken into the spirit and I saw this big, beautiful gate and over the gate said, welcome to the kingdom of heaven. So I was allowed to stand. It was like a bridge nonetheless to the gate, but I was allowed to stand on kind of like, it was kind of like the inside behind the gate, but I was kind of looking through the gate. Or I, I was kind of like, I had peripheral vision where I could look through the wall, look through the gates. And there were many, many, many Christians, many, many people outside. Lord, let me in, let me in, let me in, please, Lord. I did this and that for you. And these were the people who were compromising. You like to smoke your little bud. You think it's okay to, 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 to fornicate and then nothing ain't wrong. And Sunday, you're gone and wearing a Louis Vuitton suit. Let me tell you, that suit can't even save you. Louis Vuitton can save you. Gucci, Armani, Ferrari, Versace can save you. Because you look good on the outside, but in the sight of God, smelling rotten on the inside. Amen. And this is why the Bible says, God says that, you know, that he looks on the inside. Amen. Whereas man looks on the outside. People will look at you and think, oh, everything's fine. He true man of God. But the Bible says, and, it, and, and that one, that word leads into this. You know the tree by its fruit and not the gifts. You could be flowing in all the nine gifts of the spirit and still go to hell. Why? Because the gifts and the fruit are separate. The gifts and the fruit are separate. You know the tree by its fruit. When you look outside, I'm sure you can say, oh, that's an orange tree because there's an orange on it. That's a banana tree because there's a banana on it. That's a coconut tree because there's coconuts on it. Why? Because you know the tree by its fruit. Amen? By its fruit. So, with regards to the father sexies and the pastor sexies, in the pulpit, what kind of fruit do they possess? So, Satan has been infiltrating God's church for years. For years. As you can see, many years ago, you would almost not hear about a witch. People were preaching about it, but the, the witches were so, so much behind the scenes that it would always, it will almost make you feel that they didn't exist. The pastors, in some cases, was just cooking up some um, theological fantasy. But nowadays, the witches are coming out bold. Look how they're coming out. We cursing Donald Trump, and I want people. Somebody posted a reply the other day to me, telling me, "Why would God?" Donald Trump is a Freemason. Why would you associate God with him? Why would you associate God with you? Jesus said that the whole does not need a physician. You are mixing your bitterness and your, and, and, and your personal view with what God's view is. In the book of Isaiah 55, God says, As high as the heavens are than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Donald Trump is a Christian, but in our walk with Jesus Christ, we are at different levels. The Bible talks about God removing, setting up kings, and removing kings. 
In the book of Romans chapter 13, it thoughts, it, let me tell you what Romans chapter 13 says. Thank God for technology. <laughs> All you do, don't do no AI sermon, amen? Don't let no AI um, write you no sermon. Because that is of the Holy Spirit, amen? That's of the flesh. You let the Holy Spirit birth in you what the message is, amen? But don't let AI write you a sermon and then you edit it. Because it means that the, the Spirit of God was absent, amen? You did not. You did not seek the Lord for the word, for the revelation, for the insight. Romans 8, 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Let's go to Romans chapter 13. So let me, which version should I read this from? Let me read it from a more simplified version. So should we either do the NASB or the ESV? Let's try, let's go for the ESV version. Here we go. Romans chapter 13 says, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. If there's a good leader, they've been put by God. If there's a bad leader, they've also been put in place by God. Donald Trump is a Christian, and for those of you who got a problem with that, I'm sure the people before many of you came to strength, you were a baby Christian and you grew from strength to strength, grace to grace. Whether you be, be, whether you're such friends with the media that you've been poisoned with hatred and all this kind of garbage, you know what I mean? You, you're so blinded with hatred that you ask me, why would you associate God with Donald Trump? Why would you associate God with you? You're probably living in sexual sin. Probably, I mean, so let me word it this way. Some people are living in sexual sin. Some people are living in homosexuality according to the word of God. Some people are drinking, cussing, swearing, jealousy, grudge, envy, hating, bitterness. These are characteristics alone that can send people to hell. So if any of these characteristics are inside of you, why should we associate God with you? The same way that the grace of God has been made available to you to repent that you can have a life in Christ. It is made available to President Trump. He's God's chosen man and he's the right one for the job. Whether you like it or not, I guess it's something that you might need as the saying goes. Please don't go smoking. Don't go smoking. As the saying goes, you will need to stick that in your pipe and smoke it. In other words, you will need to get on with it, whether you like it or not. So, amen, that's Romans chapter 13 that is talking about um, God. And, uh, and 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 says that God is the one who establishes or establishes. I think it says, believe the Lord, believe the prophets and prosper. I'm believing the Lord your God will establish you. Let's search 2 Chronicles 2020. Yeah, yeah. De -de -de -de. And it says here, I'm going to read it from ESV, ESV version again. And they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. Tekoa. And when they went out, Josephat stood and said, Hear me, Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Believe his prophets, and you will succeed or prosper so god establishes amen hallelujah glory be to god god is the same one who gave joe bidden a chance 
Why then will we associate God with your bidding? Glory be to God. So, there are lots of father sexies in the pulpits. And we are in the age that I believe that even, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to go that route. So we're in the age that um, we are seeing lots of lawlessness and perversion. Revelation 12, 12 talks about Satan coming down with great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. So the enemy's strategy, think of it. He wants to get as many people in hell as possible as he can. So one of his strongest tools is to use sexual sin and perversion. I think, listen, sex is more powerful than we can imagine. This is why God made it clear that it is only correct through the channel of marriage. Sexual intimacy is more spiritual than it is physical. When, these, when a person who comes in the name of the Lord stands on a pulpit, have you heard the, the saying or the terminology amongst the drug world or drug pushers? You never get high on your own supply. You have pastors in the pulpit getting high or sexing up the young congregations. Amen. Sexing up the young congregations. And Satan is placing many people in the pulpit who are not or haven't been called by God. Haven't been called by God. I just heard in the spirit, before, as, as, as I was bringing this message, that there's somebody, you see how God is, you might say, how can this be? Because God knows what people are thinking even before you bring the word forward. How do we know? He says, listen, even before you call, I heard you and I answered you. So nonetheless, I'm going to answer, move. In other words, I went forward a little bit in time to hear a question that I'll answer anyway. But it is something that someone has been puzzling. Can God call you in a dream? Of course, God can call you in a dream. I've had several confirmations about my call being called as a prophet, but let me give you one of the most, what I would say, um, one of the most, um, there's a word I'm looking for. Help me somebody. Profound experiences. So, excuse me. You know, if I, 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 I'm still in, I'm still in the middle of my law degree. So let me say something here. Um, one day I was asking myself, Lord, what's going on with me? What's going on? I'm here. I don't know what to do. Um, You know, kind of wrestling with the Lord because I'm, Lord, what's up? You know, what, 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 what's going on with me, man? All of this, I was saying like this. Silently, I didn't utter a word, nothing. And I said, in my heart, Lord, am I really called as a prophet? Listen. I did not utter a single word in silence so that you can say, maybe this is some spirit heard you. I was quiet like this. Wrestling with the Lord on the inside in silence. And suddenly at the time, my son was about nine years old. My son was about nine. And my son had a dream that night. And God, because he's had so many tours of heaven, so many tours of heaven. 
God took my son into heaven that night in a dream. And King David, King David, my son said King David was showing him around, giving him a tour of heaven and showing him um, the armory, the spiritual weapons, the, the, the shields and the swords in heaven. And after King David was showing him that God took him, it's like pew, pew, in heaven and he ended up by, his, by this door. And he was watching the sheep on a pastor and Jesus came to him and looked at him and say, notice he said, go. And Jesus said, go and tell your father. I said, yes, he is a true and a sincere prophet. And after Jesus said that to him, um, remember, now this happened, let's say, in the night, maybe maybe 9 p.m. So he went to bed, you know, during the next day, the morning after he woke up. We had no prior conversation. I didn't, I, I didn't tell my wife. I told nobody what I was thinking. It was just, you know, that state arguing with the Lord in my heart. Not a single utterance. And Jesus tell him to go back and tell your father, yes, he's a sincere prophet. He's a prophet of God. So can God give you your call in the dream or in the vision? Of course he can. You see, there's something in the Bible, a verse of the Bible that it, to me, it is very, it is very, it's a very unique, peculiar verse. It is a very interesting verse where it says that all things are possible with God. Sometimes we are saying, God won't do this, God won't do that, God won't do this. And I've learned to kind of tone down that line quite much. Because it says what? All things are possible with God. We're not talking about filth. All things are possible with God. So I've learned to, and I'm still learning how to tone it down a bit that God won't do this, God won't. You'll be shocked the things God would do. Amen. So I'm learning to kind of tone down that line, that, 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 to, 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 to change my tone and God will never do it. I still slip into it but i'm i'm getting better and i'm learning um to 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 manage that statement with diligence so so these guys are in the pulpit professing to know the word of god how can you profess to know the word of God from A to Z? Because the word of God is A to Z. Why? You have from Genesis to Revelation, there's 66 books in the Bible. A to Z. They profess to know the word of God in spirit and in truth. But you sleep in with your congregation. You having women, bringing women to your church to become prostitutes for your guests and for people to sleep with but you're saying you're a man of God. People of God, you need to be able to discern witches and warlocks in the pulpit. And some of them have you so frightened. Hey, you don't talk against a man of God. That is not a man of God. That is no man of God to fear. That is no man of God to fear. When a man of God, you have evidence that you can say the man of God slept with you, has abused you, slept with your girlfriends, is sleeping with all kinds of people, and that is what they will hold around. That's no man of God. Well, it's a man of the God of this. Well, actually, actually, that's a man of the God of this world. Amen. Let me show you something here. Let me show you a verse that justifies what I'm saying. Second Corinthians chapter four, verses four says this. There are two gods in this scripture. Listen carefully. In this case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers with a, with a small g to keep them from seeing 
the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God with a with a capital G. Well, Christ is there, but you know, the, he and the Father are one. So that's why I say there are two gods um, in this passage. Amen. So notice the God of this world. So they are men of the God of this world. Remember, why are you amazed that they know the scriptures? Well, Satan knows the scriptures too. When he took Jesus upon a mountain, didn't he quote scriptures? He knows the scriptures too. The Bible says, you know the tree by its fruits. I'm going to say something here. I might get some backlash for it, but I'm very old school. Sorry, but I personally, I'm, I'm thanking the Lord for toning me down and, and, and dealing with my character because I personally, some, so sometimes you see some false prophets having unusual protection. And you look at it thinking, oh, God has called them. Oh, they're so protected. No, you know why they have the protection? Because you know how many people out there want to kill them? How many people out there want to deal with them? That's why they have this kind of protection. Why? Because of their falsehood. It is good to have a security detail in this time. I think it is good. Why? Because Jesus had 12, 12, 12 disciples in the end. He had security detail. Look at it. When they came to take Jesus to be crucified, Peter pulled out his sword and chopped off one of the uh, Roman soldiers' ears. Amen. He had security detail. And I'm not going to go into this. And we can prove it again with when um, the woman with the issue of blood. And, Pete, and she was, you know what I mean? And she said, if only I can touch the hem of his garment. When people were thronging Jesus, they were all wrong, you know. His security detail, his disciples were there. My man, Lord, what do you mean somebody touched you? And so many people there, there were his security detail. Amen. So I'm not going to break down this revelation too much for you. If you're not of a military background, you, this, this, this might be foreign language to you. I'm not saying something is wrong with that. And amen, you know, that God has blessed you on that. But the false prophets... There's an image they, 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 they portray that is false. They go and they, you see them with all these sports cars and everything. And you look at the cars and think, oh, that person is really prospering. They must have this kind of money. Amen. You look at the cars and stuff. Do you know they rent the cars? Do you know how you can lease a car from a garage? Some of these, a lot of these false prophets have a spiritual father who is normally a witch, a warlock as some great prophet that people bow to. Amen? Who tells them what to do, or go and do this, or go do that, go portray this specific image to, to attract people like a magnet. Portray a specific image to attract people as a magnet. If people seeing that you, you, you know, you're man of God, and you got all these Mercedes Benz and stuff, Wow! You know, all these um, Bentleys, they're going to see, wow, you're so blessed. Everybody's going to start to pitch into the pool because they want to partake. I partake. I partake of the anointing. You see, this is ignorance because sometimes you're partaking with Satan. You're entering into a spiritual covenant. And when you're talking about you partake, and because not having eyes to see or ears to hear because your discernment is through the window, you are partaking with Satan. Because when you see an, when there's an, a, a, an agent of Satan in the flesh in the pulpit who is doing this filth in the name of the Lord, influenced by the Jezebel spirit. Amen. Influenced by the Jezebel spirit. Amen. Influenced by the Jezebel spirit. And you're talking about you partake. You enter into a spiritual covenant. Here's how I can prove this is true. One time the Lord told me, do you know that anytime somebody, and this is going to shock many of you, even says, oh, for example, this ministry is called TNG Ministries. If somebody even say in their mind, Lord, oh, I would just love to bless TNG Ministries with in their heart with, 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 with a million one day. Do you know God, the Lord says, said to me, do you know I hold it to them as that they made a covenant with me? What? Just because they imagine it? He said, yes. So if that is a covenant, 
Imagine when you are saying, this is what I'm saying, there's some people out there, you owe so many people so much, you don't even understand why your life is the way it is because there's lots of covenants you have not honored. And let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 4 to 5. Ecclesiastes, by the way, I never went to a Bible school. One day I was attending a, a wonderful church and the Holy Spirit told me to come out and sit at my feet. Let me teach you my word the way I want, the way I want you to bring my word. And there are times I would sit on the bed when I was, you know what I mean, uh, when I was locked away in the room just waiting on Jesus. And for those of you who haven't heard that side of the testimony many years ago, I decided um, after I came out the military, etc. to, when the Lord took me back, um, to, 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 to go, because the, 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 my journey in how the Lord took me back is that I wanted to be really big and it's over 15 years ago. So I started to take some steroids and I, I felt when I fell down, I fell down the ground and felt my spirit coming out of the body. And I said, Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, help me. The minute I said, pew, I felt my spirit return back into my body in less than a few seconds. I got up, took the steroids, threw everything out, threw the garbage, and, my la and I never looked back since. You see, there's some people you need to beat them with thousands of stripes. But the Lord knows with me, all he needs to do is just once, and that's it, Lord. How far should you run? Each and every one operates different. So after that time, I went on this journey with the Lord. In, in pursuing him. So there are times I was locked down. I was reading at sometimes like maybe five, 10 books a week. The, the spirit of God came on me. <gasps> I mean, I was just reading, going through books like Revelation. I couldn't even, I, 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 it just came. <gasps> I was going through books, reading, reading, reading book after book after book after book. I mean, like a computer. Some months, my wife would tell you, I probably read about, I don't know, maybe 25, 30, 40. I was reading that much books and couldn't stop it till the Lord brought it to an end. Uh, when that season had finished but i was locked down sometimes in a room and you know <laughs> soldiers know how to how to deal with not showering for periods of time so the times i were locked down i mean i would hardly go out i would be shut down in a room just seeking the lord worshiping praising him adoring him going through scriptures warfare prayers just just being just in his presence and i would just feel the presence of the lord just sit on the bed i would be on the bed and i feel like boom boom like a present, like the physical springs go, and revelation would just physically, physically, I mean, spiritually begin to flow with regards to the word of the Lord. Amen. Now, that is how to, my spiritual life became enlightened according to Ephesians chapter 1. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1, is it, what's it, 7 or 17? Ephesians 1, 17, I think it is. Let's look at Ecclesiastes. Chapter 5, verses 4 to 5, I think it is. Let, let, let me see where we're going, where we're going with this. So it says here, Let me, right. chapter 5, verses 4 to 5. Okay, so let's choose the ESV version here. Sorry, people. It's good to keep you. I hope you're searching with me too. Now, I tell people, at the end of the day, it is correct that we need the word of God, which is the Bible. But it is not meant to stay on the pages. It's meant to be written in our spirit, on our heart. Because when times come that there's no Bibles, etc. But I'm sure they won't be able to completely eradicate Bibles. If now, because Jesus said there's 24 hours in a day. If now you, the people of God, begin to find PDF Bible versions. You hear me? PDF. And begin to download the Bibles on your MacBooks. Download them, not in iCloud and clouds where they can access and go and delete it. Begin to download them on some stick drives and some... You know, begin to do it now. Don't wait till the time come they ban Bibles. Church and people of God, if you grew up in a Christian family, begin to go and download them to places so that when you go one day, Apple is no longer allowing the Bible on the App Store, Google, Play Store. You can't get it. Make sure you have several copies downloaded in PDF versions. Amen. Even if you, amen, in, in, in places that, that, 
you know, is kept safe because there will always be apps that will be encrypted, I believe. But still, you know, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 4 to 5. What does it say here? 5, let's, where's verse 4? Here we go. When you vow a vow to God, do not delay paying it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you vow. It is better that you should not vow than that you vow and not pay. So there are many times, this is what I was telling you about before, there are people out there who are making all kinds of promises in their thoughts and their imaginations, and you think, oh, I just imagine it, it means nothing. Hmm. Don't fool yourself. So the Lord made that clear to me, hey, they think so. So this is why many of them don't even understand sometimes what, what, why their life is in chaos, because they're not paying the things that they vow. Amen. So hallelujah, glory be to God. Back to the past, the sexy and father sexies. You can even see the father sexies in the Catholic Church. You see on the news, sodomizing little boys. I'm sure you have seen this in the news because for those of you who have an issue with what I'm saying, well, the media clearly, the media clearly puts it out there in the newspapers. I'm sure you have read it many times in the newspapers about, um, about, <clears throat> about pastors, Catholic priests, or the, I'm sure. I'm, you probably read it yesterday or the other day. Amen. So Father Sexies. Amen. Now, these are predators in the pulpit. These are people that Satan, lots of them are, are, are witches, warlocks. Well, females are mainly named as witches. If it's a male, it will be a wizard or warlock. But the term witches kind of generalize the witchcraft that they does that they do or that is done amen so the catholic fathers these people are predators false prophets they prophesying you know the lord said that you must sleep with me because our baby is going to be holy and you women who are lack who lack understanding, who have not read the word of God for yourself. Do you know what? You might be able to be a bit more compassionate on a person from the Catholic Church who is transitioning to a charismatic belief in Jesus Christ. Because my wife, as you know, is uh, my wife is Polish and she grew up in Catholicism and she told me that when she grew up in this what what was apparent to her was that the lack of you reading the Bible they never encouraged her to read the Bible herself so they were like reading it for you but you're not encouraged to read the Bible yourself so when she began to read the Bible because she met me and I'm from a, obviously a Christian background Though we met in sin, but still, I was, as again, I was out in the world before, you know, I was sinning, but because I grew up in the Lord, I would be sinning, sleeping with all these girls, etc., and still go and read the word of God, amen? So that was that lifestyle back then, amen? So she said as she began to read the Bible for herself, she realized, hang on a minute, they fooled me. She began to question things in the Bible and research. Hang on a minute. Wait, 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 wait. When she read the Bible with her own eyes from Genesis, I mean, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, I would tell anybody, when you're reading the word of God, start to read it from Matthew, Mark. Sorry, you could either read from Matthew, Mark, Luke, all the way to Revelation, or start from John down and then start from Genesis. There's a reason for that. Because if you just jump at the beginning, it, it, it might not really make sense to you as a beginner. You might deem God or seem God in another light. So start from John and then it will explain really. It will be the, the beginning will be of more relevance. So she began to scrutinize the Bible and what she was t thought um, as a Catholic. And she realized, hang on a minute. If this is the same Bible that they are supposed to be being led by and being followed by, 
something's wrong. Something's wrong. So she began to compare what she was taught and marry it with the Bible. She realized, oh no, I need to get out of that Catholic church. Her eyes was open. Her understanding was open when she read the Bible for herself. So I believe that there are many people with different beliefs in Catholicism. Again, I'm not punching. Amen. Need perhaps, like my wife did, to read the Bible for themselves. Because, you know, people have this. And you know what it is too? I believe there are people that, oh, I can't. I, I stick in. This is my culture. Why? Because you're lazy. You don't want to read the word. You're scared of the truth. You're scared that if you go and search the internet and you read the Bible for yourself, you are going to realize that, oh, suddenly now I've, I've seen the real truth myself. So now your, 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 your problem is that you're going to have to deal with your family and your friends because they are thinking now that your belief is different. So this is why many people pretend, oh no. Oh. So if Jesus died for you to have a relationship um, with him, amen, why is it that you need to go all the time to, 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 to a priest? Of course, they're pastors, apostles, prophets who teach the children and the word of God because the book, the Bible is spiritual. Therefore, um, God has appointed servants, you know, through his Holy Spirit to 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 to. To, to, to bring edification, exhortation, comfort, etc. to the body of Christ through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Jesus had to go that we will receive the Holy Spirit in return. If he didn't go, then that would have been a different story. Amen. But there's many different barriers. I believe sincerely that, that if you want to know the truth, you will go look for the truth. My wife wanted to know the truth. She didn't take my word about when I was telling her about, you know, about Jesus Christ, you know, this is the way it is, etc. She didn't take my word. She listened to what I said, but she searched the truth herself to see if what I was saying bared reference with the Bible and she compared it with what she was taught as a child. And she realized, oh my goodness, pure, 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 pure error. And she ran from that. And she asked God for forgiveness and she realized that you don't need to go to a priest to ask. So imagine this is what I'm saying. You're going to a priest in some cases who have been sodomizing children, asking him to forgive you of your sins. He's a filthy person. He's of the devil. Amen. And when you consider that you're going to a man to ask a man who is flesh and blood like you for forgiveness. So why, what, what, what was the point in Jesus's death? burial and resurrection why would he die for you to go to a man when you can come directly to him and ask him for forgiveness that was the point in his in his death burial and resurrection that you can now come directly to him to receive forgiveness you don't have to go to man look at the rubbish we're talking about pastor sexy father sexy Amen. Then it will make his death of no significance. If you're going to a man, amen, who, who's going to turn around and you see him in some cases, which people have done in the newspaper a few weeks after, arrested, confession, sodomizing thousands of little boys. That's the same man you want to forgive your sins. He's the devil. Read the Bible and you'll see the works of the devil. Let me give you some scriptures to prove to you that's the works of the devil. Flesh. He's in the flesh. So let's take a look at this. Let's look at Rev um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be seen. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor rivalers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. That's not of God. 
It just said here, no sodom no homosexuals. No sodomites. So when you go to, 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 to one of these masquerading as a priest and skip for forgiveness for the, for the sins, who has forgiven you? You're still stuck in a place needing and wanting forgiveness because that same flesh and blood needs God's forgiveness. That per he needs God's forgiveness and you're going to him asking him to forgive you. People of God, years back when there was no technology, we got away with being dumb. We escaped for, being, for, 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 for suffering uh, 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 an understanding. For, for we got away with being ignorant. But now we live in the times where there's Google, there's the internet, there's articles where you can spend hours and compare, read for yourself. Sometimes some people are so stubborn. Well, this is the way I grew up. I grew up in this. We were this all our lives and I stay in this way. Oh, well. There's some people who grew up in hell and they're going to burn in hell. Amen. If you want the truth, you will seek the truth. But many people don't want that truth because they're going to have to, when they find the truth, the next question is going to be, oh, what do I do? My mom, my family isn't going to believe. Isn't going to believe. My virgin of this. So now I'm in a place between my family uh, 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 and my marriage and my this. And this is where the problem is going to come. So for many people, it's easy to say, oh, no, I, I stay in here because they, they have in their, in their hearts, they have too much to lose. Correct. In their hearts, they have too much to lose. Amen. They have too much to lose. So that's one of the issues that's bordering this, 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 this thing with, with you know, a first hand witness to my wife converting. Yeah, amen. You know, and, and, and sometimes, amen. So back to the pulpit. Many people who have fallen victims to these people in the pulpit, a pastor, clothe up, look, I come in the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ, you're calling the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Married or not married and, and go sleeping with the women in your church or even some cases, even men. It could be a female pastor sleeping with a man or man sleeping as, as, as we just read. With men in the church. This is filth. Personally, up being old school, I personally think they need a good beating. But I'm not here to condone that action. But there's a righteous anger that rises up in one. Now, I guess many may perhaps say, well, it would be better for them to fornicate outside the church than in God's house. Well, the answer is no. Fornication is wrong, period. But on the other hand, if that happened, then it would at least show some fear of God. I'm not saying do it. It is wrong. It is sin. But what am I saying? It would at least show some fear of God because they didn't go or they didn't bring it to the, to the house of God to defile the house of God, though they themselves are defiled. Amen. Jesus whipped those who were money chargers, money changers, and whatever they were gambling and and and, and doing the the, the 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 deceitful things of money or the this this the deceitful ways of money in the house of God and he whipped them out he whipped them amen one thing that is two things that is really close to my heart Israel the people of God and the house of God when you look and that's someone who's supposed to be bringing the word of God. And these people who lack understanding go to these people believing they're true men and women of God. Then to hear, oh, the man of God. You know what happens when they sleep with these pastors or false prophets? They lose their mind. 
they believe they have done nothing wrong. For those of you who heard the testimony I shared the other day, the video before about false prophets, what was the video I shared the other day? If you're just coming on this channel for the first time, please, please don't forget to like and subscribe if your heart so desires. Amen. If your heart desires, like and subscribe. We'll be glad to have you on board. Amen. So, I'll change again the title. Right, the title is What They Wouldn't Tell You. What They Wouldn't Tell You. That's the title, What They Wouldn't Tell You. Go in there, and it's true about the false prophets, what they wouldn't tell you. Amen. So you go in and you and you listen to that message. Amen. So when I had encounter with false prophets before, when God sent me as a spy, like a Joshua and a Caleb, the false prophet would be like, oh, he's talking about, oh, you know, they're doing all these kind of perversions in the church. And the woman he was sleeping with, what, uh, look at how they're dressing, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and look at how the young people carrying themselves. And the woman he was sleeping with, which was a, 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 a European white lady, used to wear the most tight, seductive clothing in the church right next to him. The, the look, you look up there, you see Jezebel. Amen. They couldn't penetrate me because they didn't even like me. Why? I understood. The, now, I want to say something to you. If God had told me in the beginning, and for many people who are calling to ministry, if God tell you, look, if you go to India, forgive me, I'm just using a point of reference or just using you as a, as, a, as a reference. If God would say, hey, if you go to India, for example, to preach, there's some places <coughs> that you may stay that, for example, may have um, rats in the hotel or or, or mice in a hotel, for example, whatever. You won't go, not me, thine the Lord, that's the devil who I blocked it out. Ooh, 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 ooh. You will start worshiping so sweet. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I knew with, with the devil. Amen. <laughs> mm -hmm. You start to make all them little strange songs. Amen. <laughs> because you don't believe, you didn't believe it was the Lord. But if the Lord had told me, you're going to false prophet straight away. I would have said, oh, no. La, 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 la. Amen. But he didn't tell me in the beginning. He told me somewhere in the middle. Amen. But I, get to, I got to see a lot firsthand. Firsthand. They can touch me. They can penetrate me. I was praying maybe like six hours a day, seven hours a day, morning till night. You know, my word in the word, I was 24-7. They can touch me. They can penetrate me. They can infiltrate me. They, did. they were very skeptical of me. They were very skeptical of me. So I, I managed to see a lot of things, how they operate at first hand. Amen. First sight. I didn't see everything I said because they were very skeptical of me. But I got to see what the Lord wanted me to see. So we were standing in the line. And he came around, you know what I mean? Pretend he's laying hands on people and I stood there. And guess what he did? He come out to me. Oh, you know, somebody hit you on the stomach like this. Because they had nothing on me. I went down like, oh, because I wasn't looking for it. I thought he's somebody next to me. So, Whoa! so I bent down like that. So when he hit in the stomach, people looking would think, oh, he got a demon. He got a demon. But no, he just hit. If somebody hit you in the stomach, you would do the same too. Amen. So that was a nasty tactic. They tried to, 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 to work on me too. Amen. So nonetheless, what are we saying here? When you see people like that one, who's um, a filthy agent of Satan in the pulpit. You know what it is? Many people, you are running after the spiritual 
you are running after the gifts. You're not running after Jesus Christ himself. It's like you're running after the blessing, but you don't want Jesus. And this is why sometimes God will mock people too because of your heart. If you're a child of God, shall you go after the blessings of God? I, 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 well, I don't know about you. I go after them. They were there for me. Boy, I claim them. I seek them and I believe them and I receive it. Um, Job, Amen. I claim them and I believe them and I receive them. Amen. I go after that which is right for me to claim. But with or without, I love the Lord because he first loved me. Some people, you just want the blessings. You just want the benefits. Therefore, you have no, you don't walk right with God. You live in all kinds of filthy lifestyles. And, 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 and there are people out there who are being caught up with these false prophets in Africa. They're not only in Africa, by the way. They're in the Caribbean. They're in the United States of America. They're all over. But this African influence that has spread like a wildfire throughout the whole world. Amen. This, this, you know, can I prophesy? Can I prophesy? That there's a lady down there. Her underwear is blue, green, as moss. <gasps> Me. Me. Amen. They like filth. They like perversion. How the underwear is green as moss? Because they plant people in the church, women who slept perhaps in the same rooms, sharing the same room as the woman, and they go back and tell the false prophets the things that they found of the person. So when the per when they prophesy, they think, "Oh, it's me. It's true. Oh, the Lord locate me." Amen. Women, men who are void of understanding, who don't love Jesus for who He is. You like this thing that you're seeing, like magicians. Wow, they call out somebody's number. Let me tell you something. Prophesying with accuracy does not mean that you are of Jesus Christ. Is the Holy Spirit accurate? Of course he's accurate. Can he give you ac precise accuracies? Yes. But remember, the devil is a counterfeit. He sees what goes on in the spirit realm. He can also give people accurate prophecies. Amen. He can also give people accurate prophecies. That's why you know the tree by its fruit. Amen. You know the tree by its fruit and not by the gift. Can I prophesy? Like he's pulling one of these, um, one of these old Bedford trucks from the seventies or sixties, you know, these trucks that made in Great Britain. Ah, ah. You know, giving the driver time to find the other gear, a few minutes to find the other gear, amen. Can I prophesy? That's what they sound like a truck, a bed for a truck. Amen. It, disgust, it, it is disgusting. And the thing is about it, you have these innocent people who are being hurt who are being broken, who are being torn apart by these predators in the pulpit. By these predators in the pulpit. Amen. It is filthy. And this is why you, the children of God, need to discern. You need to seek the Holy Spirit whilst he may be found. Amen. You need to discern. You need to discern good from evil. And this discernment only comes through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sometimes you find women who love this. Listen, a, a false prophet could be on YouTube. They will get millions of views if they say, ah, 
this is how you do, huh? Uh, this is how you do to the girls. Oh, people flocking. Oh, leave it. He's a man of God. Oh, what wrong with you? He's just showing us. Why? Because you like filth. You like filth. You like perversion. You like the ways of Satan. Why? That's your style. Because perhaps, you know, there's this category where they go, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, and they go home and burn a charm. Then go home and burn a candle against somebody, a red or black candle. Then go home and use charcoals, coals, or crystals to put a curse on somebody. So that's your style. That's your arena. That's why that filth, you like it. Because it goes hand in hand with your beliefs and the way you want to be. But for those of you who are seeking the Lord Jesus Christ in holiness, in spirit, and in truth, that. Is filth and it is not the way for any person to be. It is not of the Holy Spirit. It is not of Jesus Christ. And war are these spiritual predators. And I feel strongly the Holy Spirit is telling me right now as I'm bringing this message, it were easier if they had not been born. I hear it. I hear it as loud as a whistle. I didn't want to say it, but the Lord make me say it were easier if they had not been born. Amen. So, please, people of God, and any person coming to Jesus Christ, the Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. So when it comes to other religions, if Jesus is the, if this is true, what Christians believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, no one can come to God. In other words, you can't get into heaven outside of Jesus. I don't know about you, but that would terrify me. Think of it. If they are right and you are rejecting that way and heaven is real, hell is real, and Jesus is the only way to heaven, then it means if you're rejecting Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. That would terrify me. And that's food for thought. Think of it. Because let's say, let's say the Christians were wrong. It means that you didn't believe anyway, so it's not skin as they would, as they would say, off your nose. These, some of these terminologies could, could be relevant. No skin off your nose. Well, I hope not. Amen. But I assure you that when you begin to seek the Lord Jesus Christ, he will reveal himself to you. Amen. You have not because you ask not. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Seek and you will find. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Amen. The Bible talks about, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. We really need to pray for the church. For Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, holy are you and worthy to be praised. Blessed be your holy name. Jesus, who is like unto thee? You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, that I am that I am. He who was, he who is, and he who is to come. You said before Abraham was I am. Lord, I bring your church before you today. Father, deliver your sheep. Jesus, you did not lay your you did not lay your life down, Father. For the, the, the for the sheep of your church to be defied. Defiled or defied. By false prophets. Father, sleeping with the people in the church, impregnating them, telling them go and get rid of it, and all kinds of stuff. Father, oh God, I am asking that that judgment will come back to your house. I am asking that that judgment will come back to the altar of God. 
let the angels of judgment stand on the altars of God. Lord, let that fear with um, Ananias and Sapphira, Father, with Ananias and Sapphira, let this fear of God begin to come back to the house of God. Father, how long shall this be? Is my cry. Oh God, how long shall this be? Father, into your hands. I surrender your church. I surrender the body of Christ for cleansing and purification. For it is stated in your word. Judgment begins first in the house of God. Therefore, I call the judgment of God to cleanse the house of God. Father, blessed be your holy name. And we thank you for the glorious bride that nothing will stand in her path for she shall be glorious and she shall be splendorous. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Abba Father. Amen. So, I would like to expand a little bit more on this, which could take about seven, eight, nine, ten hours because there's a revelation within revelation within revelation, all stemming from the Holy Spirit. But there's a time and a place according to Ecclesiastes for everything under the sun. So I bless you and I pray that the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Excuse me. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant you shalom. Now, if you're being led by the Holy Spirit and you want to consider partnering with this ministry, there should be some information down in the description. Go to the website and donations. I think it is our partners' donations. Amen. And on the other hand, also, if you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe, share, and care. Sharing is caring. How do we know? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. God shared Jesus Christ, his son, with us. As a matter of fact, he gave his son to us. Amen. So give this word to a relative or friend. You'll be surprised the great things that God works in the heart and in the lives of people. I salute you.